up announced they had completed signing contracts with Amazon Studios. Uh, as expected, Henry Cavill will be the executive producer of whatever they're making in 2024 to 2025. Uh, at the moment, they don't know if they're making a movie or TV show or both. Uh, and at this point, all I can say is I'm personally excited for this. Alex, you're actually even a bigger Warhammer fan than I am. How excited are you about this? I'm very excited for a few reasons. One, I think that it's about time that this got like some big money, big screen treatment. And we've seen Amazon in the past is not afraid to um, hurl dump trucks of money at projects. <laughs> uh, rings of power. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. I think they are trebucheting dump trucks of money at various places uh, since they bought MGM Studios. Um, so I have no doubt that they're going to invest in this. I think the fact that Henry Cavill is show running this executive producer, whatever it, his, yeah. his role and likely according to reports from THR starring in it, I'm excited because he loves the IP, right? Henry is a yeah. giant Warhammer nerd. Um, and so I can't think of anybody better to be running this. More importantly, he's a big uh, World of Warcraft nerd, and everybody that has photoshopped his face on Arthas, I still want that too. Um, but I will say the only thing that is tempering a little bit of my excitement about Henry Cavill and others being a part of this is that he's a fucking Custodes player, and Custodes are the cheesiest fucking army to play in Warhammer. Come at me in the comment section. Orcs for life, baby. Um... <laughs> But yeah, no, he is really a Custodes player because uh, he did entire streams showing painting his uh, painting his Custodes army and stuff. Um, I I mean, if there's anybody that can breathe a little bit of life, I don't really like the Warhammer lore as much in the books and things like that. I have a big issue with how dark and things like that. I know in the grim dark future, blah, blah, blah. However, uh, there is room for actual like non emo stories in the Warhammer world. And yes, I'm saying that most of the stories that have been written about Warhammer are pretty fucking emo. So maybe he can actually bring us some really nice, good stories that are still solid that fit the Warhammer lore. I'm not saying let's go comedy or anything yeah. like that. That's what the orcs are for. Um, but I, I, you know, I think if there's anybody that can probably steer the ship in the right direction and give us a good Solid adaptation of Warhammer. I think Cavill's probably the right person for it. Uh, somebody's bringing up that there were 64 books for the Horus Heresy, and you have a note here. Apparently there's something new releasing there. The end of it is coming up in February 2024. I think I actually put 2023 in the thing. You did. Um, but 2024. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so the Horus Heresy, they're finally getting through the entire Horus Heresy. Um, yeah. I, Chris the Lemur says uh, in chat, give me the orc show. I would Call me. I will write it for you. I am hundred uh, percent. I am. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Give me the orc show. Um, <laughs> I'm curious which direction he's going to go. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people on social media calling like do it rogue trader style. That way you get the widest swath of the galaxy, right? Yeah, you You're not just locked into like one space Marine unit or one IG unit or mm -hmm. one, whatever. And I think that's probably, um, I know our friend Phil would like to see him. There's a specific Inquisitor slash thing that, that, mm -hmm. that Phil he, would like. He's a big fan. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I'm a big, I'm, 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 I'm hyped for this one. I think it's going to be fun. Eisenhorn. Thank you. That was the one that I was trying to think of. <laughs> um, I, I kind of think you do the Horus Heresy in a movie or two movies, and yeah, you the, do it. the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of. But that's the Horus later. Heresy. I think you need something really almost basic. As we talk he, about on the show a lot, we need to get the normies. He, here's what. Well, yes, but this is the this is the thing that I think is is interesting about that is you have to reference the Horus Heresy really to kind of set up the Imperium of Man and things like that and why there's no Emperor and, and all of the things that kind of come along with that. So you need to at least do some flashbacks to give somebody the base setting of, okay, here's where we are right now. You need to show Necrons waking up from the tomb world. You know, you got to kind of have to set all the stakes of what it is, which is the thing that I will say about Warhammer is when it comes down to the like base beginnings of whoever you want is the big bad, which I think Necrons, Drukhari, 
things like that could be really, really cool. Uh, I do have to hand it to them. They have some very easy ways to jump into. This is the beginning of, you know, the orcs. This is the beginning of the Necrons. And you can go all the way back in their history of thousands of years and stuff like that. But if you want to just set up the fact that they're here, you can just show them Terminator style waking up on the tomb worlds. And then the audience is like, boom, done. Okay, we're here with you. It's, you know, human looking death machines coming at us and stuff like that. Got it. Weird green eyes. Holy crap, this is scary. We're moving on, kind of thing. Um, so I kind of like that ability that Warhammer's done to be like really get people into the lore really quickly to kind of set the stakes up for everything. Then you can jump into all the detail and stuff like that from there. Um, and I just think the Horus Heresy is like a very easy one was there's an army, there's an army that got corrupted, the armies turned on each other, and thus we have this whole thing. Now I know there's 63 other books to have to deal with, but you know, 64 in total, but it's one of those kind of things where I think it is a kind of, a, when you break it down to bare bones sort of thing, there's a very simple premise that you can bring along the normies for something like this, um, which is what Halo didn't do. And I think that's kind of the big thing that, that we can learn from a series like that. Um, some of the chats bring up like a 15 season show. Uh, the thing about Warhammer, and I think that this is another thing that a lot of the studios are looking for. Every studio wants their multi-billion dollar franchise, right? Everybody wants it. And not everybody has one. And mm -hmm. I think Amazon is still kind of looking for that, like their big, big franchise. This could be it. You know, there is um, enough source material here and enough of a strong uh, customer base on this franchise already that if you can build on what's already there, I think you've got a really good chance of turning this into a multi-billion dollar entertainment franchise on top of what GW already does. I, I, I tend to say that Warhammer is much more niche than even like Fallout, especially in America. Uh, I think you're going to get a lot more people that are going to get on and hyped about the Fallout series that they're coming out with, which if you haven't seen that video that we did about it, we're hyped for it because they've gotten a lot of things right. Yeah. Which then leads me to believe that if they got the power armor from fallout looking really nice and everything we like do that space in the marines. we're gonna be able to do space marines which is not always easy to do and a lot of people have screwed that up yeah um i think the thing that you need to do with a series like this because somebody in the chat just said they talked about what's a primark what's this what's that forget it don't even say those words don't even bring any of that crap out they don't call it and do it like the mcu does they don't always call people by their call signs they don't, you know, they, they mention that Wanda Maximoff is a Scarlet Witch, a Scarlet Witch. They don't call her the Scarlet Witch all the time. They call her Wanda. They humanize comic books and do these kinds of things. They need to go back to the more human stories of what is happening with inside this larger sort of war. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you do that, you got a chance to actually break out of that big niche that we, that we think is in there. Yeah. I, I think they got, I think they got a good shot at it. Uh, let us know what you think. Leave us a comment. Tell us how, tell us how you think this is going to go. Are you hyped for uh, Henry's Warhammer series?